little discussions in, during our presentation. And then we'll have a real discussion about improving our oral health, maybe even focus based on improving our studying and learning. Let me open my window. I think I'm out visible. I need that because I need to explain to you all the presentation. And while I'm doing this, I need to use my body language and then just explain you everything throughout our presentation. So you will be watching me also. Good luck with that. Do you have anything to say, Hajakbar? Uh, you can continue. Like the connection is a little bit bad in Hajakbar's phone, I guess. Oh, I understand. Okay. So, as I said before, the first is like going to be the presentation, of course, and I'm going to explain how what the focus is, what concentration is, and how to focus and concentrate concentrate on one thing, and then we'll move on to our discussion. Yes, yes, yes. So let me give you a brief introduction of what we are going going to do during this uh, session of our speaking club. So the speaking club is mainly about focus and concentration. Um, Rasulbek, my partner, will be giving some insights and some tips on how, how to improve your uh, focus and concentration. Uh, while I will be giving some questions during the presentation, and at the end, we'll give some topics to discuss and to have some debates about. So if you guys are ready, let's start it. Okay, good. So today we'll be learning about how to focus and attention. Like, without further ado, let's watch the animation. So the best way to get better at focusing is to use the mechanism of focus that you are born with. The key principle here is that mental focus follows visual focus. We are all familiar with the fact that the visual system can be unfocused, blurry, or jumping around, or we can be laser focused on one space or something else. What's interesting is how to access that visual focus. You can use your visual focus and you can increase your visual focus as a way of increasing your mental focus ability and other things. So I'm gonna explain how to do that. Okay. So let's move on with the presentation. Mm-hmm. Okay. So how passive it starts with its level alertness. The alertness we can come from a sense of love, sense of joy, a sense of fear, doesn't matter. So there are pharmacological ways to access alertness too. The most common one is like drinking coffee, caffeine, which you, if you watch this like you may have learned about this from your parents or from the internet. So caffeine can be a relatively safe way to increase epinephrine, which is a like alertness and focus hormone. So focus that it brings is, is available, as I mentioned, like in pharmacology also, also through the behavioral practices. And the behavioral practices that are anchored in visual focus are the ones that will allow you to develop great depth and duration of focus. So let's think about visual focus for a second. When we focus on something visually, we have two options. We can either look at a very small region of space 
and without a, a lot of detail, without a lot of conc concision, or we can dilate our gaze into where we can see big piece of visual space and with very little detail. So we can look, we cannot look at everything with higher resolution. So, yeah. So, mm -hmm. and so we perceive less so on that. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you don't understand, let me give you an example. So, simple experiment I can do right now. If you're listening to this, you can still do it. You can hold your prick lens in front of you, provided that you're precise. You should be able to how many fingers you have in front of you. For me, if it's five, still got five fingers, I'm visual enough. And if I move my hand off to the side, like this, but well, I can't see them with precision, but as I move them back to my center of my visual field, I can see them with precision, with higher resolution, because that's because in the number of pixels in my center of my, like in my eyes, are much higher than in my side. So when you focus, we do a couple of things. First of all, we tend to do that in the center of our visual field. And our two eyes tend to align with what's called vision side movement towards a common point. The other thing that happens is that lengths of our eye move so that our brain now no longer sees the entire visual world but it sees C small cone of visual world imagery, like that small cone of visual imagery, or so destroy view that the world has much higher beauty, like higher resolution than if I were to look at everything. Now you say, of course, like it brings, it means perfect sense, but it's about visual attention, not mental attention. Well, it turns out that focus in the brain, in our brain, is anchored towards those visual system. I'll talk about, yeah, assuming that somebody's like can see, the key is still how to learn, improve, improve focus visually. If you want to bring about higher level of, of cognitive or mental focus, even if you engage in a physical task. So there's a remarkable phenomenon in animals and in humans also, when animals have their eyes on the side of their head, they're scanning the environment all the time. They're not focused on one thing. It can include birds, like fish and rabbits and all the other animals. So let's imagine a bird. That bird's head is up here. It's about a foot off the ground or it's a small bird since it's off the ground. And if the eyes are on the side of their head, but it has this tiny beak that quickly pick up this little seas off the ground, immense, with immense precision. So now if you try to do that by staring at off to the side of your room and picking up items in front of you with high precision at a tiny, like tiny scale, you'll miss like, you can miss almost every time, but they do it perfectly. And it, they don't smash their beak into the ground and damage it. Really, like they do it beautifully, like with movement, but how do they do it? How do they create this focus or this awareness of what's in front of them? And it turns out as they lower their head, their eyes very briefly move inward in what's the version side movement. Now, their eyes can ac actually translocate in their head. They're fixed in the skull, just like here, yours and mine are. But when we move our head, like move our eyes slightly inward, we're shortening or making the inter area distance, as it's called, smaller, two things happen. Not only do we develop a smaller vi visual window into the world, but we, we activate a set of neurons in our brain system that triggers a release of both norepinephrine, epinephrine, and acetylcholine. 
non-epinephrine is kind of similar to epinephrine. Right? So in other words, you know, when our eyes are relaxed in our head, when we're just looking entire visual environment, moving our head around, moving through space or optic flow, that things moving past us, we are sitting still, we are looking broadly into our space, we are relaxed. When our eyes move slightly inward, like this, toward a particular visual target, our visual world shrinks, our visual focus shrink goes up. So, and we know that this just relates to the release of acetylcholine and epinephrine at the relevant sides of in the brain and the neuroplasticity. So, now what this means is that if you have a hard time focusing your mind, you know, like for the sake of reading or learning, you need to practice and you can practice focusing your visual system. Now, it works best if you practice it focusing visual system at the precise distance from the work that you are intended to for the sake of plasticity. So how does it look in real world? Let's say I can try to concentrate on something related to, I don't know, science, or I'm reading a science paper, having a hard time to reading it. So I might think that I am only looking at the paper that I'm reading, I'm only looking at my screen, but actually my eyes are probably darting around, experienced and done this. Or I'm gathering information from too many sources in the visual environment. Now, presumably, because it's me, I already have my coffee, I'm hydrated, I'm well rested, I'm slept well, and I still ex can experience these challenges of focusing, spending just 60 to 120 seconds of focusing my visual attention on a small like window of my screen, like on my screen of my computer with nothing on it, bringing my eyes to that particular location increases the, not just my visual acuity for that location, but also it brings about increase in activity in a bunch of other brain areas that are associated with mm, gathering like information from from this particular location so put simply if you want to improve your ability to focus and concentrate practice visual focus now if you are complex if you have like mine corrective lenses that's fine you of course you want to use those you don't want to take those those and blur the image. The finer the visual image and the more that you can hold your gaze to that visual image, the higher your levels of attention will be. So many times on Instagram, like we can see that sometimes we should not blink often, but, but we blink more as we get tired, which as you hear it, Roger say that, as we get tired, neurons in the brain stem that are responsible for alertness and I hold the eyes open, start to fal falter and I will start to close. This is why it's hard. I could barely keep my eyes open, which may be how you feel right now. But assuming that you're paying attention and you're alert, um, when you're alert, when you, your eyes are wide, your eyes are open, and as you get tired, your eyes start to close. Blinks actually reset our perception of time and space. And this, like, those are some real science rules, like, you know. And blinking, of course, is necessary to lubricate the eyes. People blink because their eyes might get dry. But if you can keep focus by blinking less, by focusing your eyes to a particular location, probably pretty creepy to experience as I'm doing this, but the more you can do this, the more you can maintain a, a kind of a cone or a tunnel of mental focus like this. Now, you may ask, what about the experiment where people, you don't like feel like that, 
examples that does involve visual attention, if you can like look at them and they will often close their eyes. And that's not a coincidence. If somebody is listening very hard, please don't ask them to look at you directly in the eye while also asking that they listen to you. That's actually one of the worst things to get somebody to listen to you. If you say now, listen to me and look me in the eye, the visual to take over and they'll see your mouth movement, but they're going to hear it through your thoughts more than what you're saying. So closing the eyes is one of the best ways to create a cone of auditory attention and this is what low vision or no vision folks do. That they have tremendous capacity to focus their attention and particular locations. So incidentally, does anyone know that their two elements have the best hearing in the world? The absolute best hearing in the world that many orders of magnitude better than humans turns out is the elephant that may not surprise you. They have huge ears and, and the moth which probably you will surprise you. I didn't know well, moth could hear, but now it explains why they are so hard to catch. So we have these cones of tone attention that we can devote. And for the poor, most people, vision is the primary way to train up this focus and ability in the cones of attention. So you have to absolutely have to focus on the thing that you're trying to learn and you will feel some agitation because of the epinephrine in your system. If you're feeling agitation and it's challenging to focus and you're feeling like you're not doing it right, chances are you are doing it right. And you can practice it, this uh, by staring for a long period of time without blinking. If your goal is to learn how to control that visual window for the sake of controlling your focus, it can be immensely powerful portal into these mechanisms of plasticity because we know that it engages things like lupus basalis in other brain systems. So yeah, there's a lot of questions about ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. So some people actually have this clinically diagnosed ADD and ADHD. And if you do, you should certainly work with a good psychiatrist and trying to figure out like for McLeod, like appropriate drugs and treatments ways. But many people, however, have given themselves a low grade ADHD or ADD because of the way that they move through their world. So they are looking at their phone a lot of the time. It's actually very easy to anchor your attention to a phone the following reason first of all it's very restricted in size you know it's very easy to limit your your visual attention to something that's lit this big it's one of the design features of the phone the other thing is that just as that you probably heard that pictures are worth of thousands of words well a movie is worth ten thousand of words and pictures Anytime you are looking at the things that have motion or visual motion, our attention system will naturally gravitate towards them, towards those movies and TikToks. It's actually much harder to read words on a paper or page than it used to be for many people because we're used to see things spelled out for us in YouTube videos or videos where things move in a very dramatic way. It is true that the more that we look at those motion stimulated, more they will see movies, things that are very dramatic in and very intense, the worse we're getting at attending to things like text on a page or to listen to something like a podcast or extracting the information. If we think about the areas of the life that dictate whether or not you become a successful, independent, healthy individuals. Uh, you, most of those involve the kind of boring practices of digesting, digesting information on a page. Boring because it's not as exciting in the moment, perhaps, as 
watching a movie or, or a reel or a shorts. So, but the more attention that you can pick something, even if it's fleeting or when you feel like only getting little bits and pieces of shards of information as it pops to the entire thing, that has a much more powerful effect in engaging this cholinergic system for plasticity than does, for instance, watching a movie. And that's because when we watch a movie, it can be, the entire thing can be great. It can be awesome. It can be this overriding experience. But I think for all those experiences, if you're somebody who's interested in building your brain and expanding your brain and getting better at various things, feeling better, doing better, and et cetera, one has to ask how much of my neurochemical resources of my brain I'm devoting to a passive experience of letting something just kind of overwhelm me and excite me versus something that is I'm really trying to learn and take away. And whether or not I enjoy movie content and TV all the time, I scroll Instagram often, but we we are limited in the extent to which we can grab a whole of this, see the call and release from like our hormones. I think I, we need to be careful that we don't devote all uh, acetylcholine and epinephrine, all our dopamine for that matter, to these passive experiences of things like that are not going to enrich us and better us. So that's a little bit of a editorial on my part, but the phone is rich with movies and entertainment and rich with information. And the real question is, is the information rich with in for us? Like, it, does it grow us or cultivate us smarter or more emotionally, like, you know, emotionally evolved or people or creating what is it doing for our physical well-being for that matter? So, I don't want to tell people what to do or not to do, but think carefully about how often are you focusing on something and how good you are or poor you are at focusing on something that's challenging. It can be a book, can be or any other things rather than TikTok. So you can focus your attention. Then the question is for how long? And in the early podcast, I'll talk like, all certain cycles last, last last about 90 minutes. The typical learning bout should be about 90 minutes. That learning will include five to 10 minutes of warm up period. I think I think everyone should give themselves permission to not to fully focus in the early part of that bout, but that in the middle of that bout for the middle hours you should be able to maintain focus for about an hour or so. So that for me, it means eliminating distractions. That means turning off the Wi-Fi. I put my phone in the other room. If I find myself reflexively getting up to get the phone, I'll take the phone and lock it in the, you know, anywhere. So that particular thing is complaining and we come up with different sources with where I need to be contact with this thing. I need you to try and experience what it is to be completely immerse in an activity where you feel it to agitation, that your attention is drifting from one place to one place. And that's an important point, which is like attention drift, but we have to anchor it. We have to grab it back in the way we do that. If you're excited with your eyes, as your attention drifts and you look away and you want to try literally maintain visual focus, on the thing that you are trying to learn. Feel free to blink, of course, but you you can greatly increase your powers and focus and the rates of learning. So if you want to learn as an adult, you have to be able to alert. Like, it's so obvious, but I think a lot of people don't think about when in their 24 hour cycle, they're most alert. Just ask yourself, when during the day, you typically tend to be most alert. 
that will afford you advantage in learning specific things during that period of time. So don't give up that period of time for the things that are meaningless, useless, or not aligned with your goals. There will be a terrible time to get into passive like observance or just you know, letting your time soaked away by something else. That is a valuable asset that epinephrine released from your brain stem is going to occur more later at a particular cycles of your um, day during the waking phase, for example. You should know when those were when those hours are and then you can start to think about the behavioral practices that may be the pharmacological practices like caffeine hydration and etc that will support heightened levels of alertness attention is something that can be learned attention is critical for creating that condition where where whatever it is that you are engaging in will modify your brain in a way that you won't have to like spend so much attention on it going forward that's the essence of plasticity like you should become reflexive the modern movement like the cognitive skill that you're the ability to suppress an emotional response or to engage in an emotional response depending on what your goals are what's appropriate for you Okay, you should also ask yourself whether or not you are trying to too much to focus, like during the day. I know very some very hard performing individuals, very hard performing in a variety of contexts, and none of them are focused all day long. Many of them take walks down the hallway, sometimes mumbling to themselves and not paying attention to anything else. They go for bike rides. They take walks. They are not trying to engage in their mind maximum focus all the time. Very few people do that because we are learning best in these ninety-minute bouts inside of one of these alternating cycles. And I should repeat again that within that ninety-minute cycle, you should not expect yourself to focus further than ninety-minute cycle. Cycle. The beginning and end will be a little bit of flickering and getting better focus, but getting some non-sleep deep, deep rest or deliberate dis, like meditation or walking or running or just sitting eyes closed or eyes open kind of mindlessly. It may seem in a chair, just letting your thoughts move around after learning about will accelerate the rate of plasticity that's been shown in Claudia Viri of previous studies. Okay. That's pretty much it for the presentation itself. Do you guys have some questions on focus and concentration? If you have some, feel free to ask me. Not from the presentation, it can be. So now you guys can ask some questions. So in the comment sections. But I have some questions for you. If you don't have my, some questions for me. So if anyone, so this is all, I guess, yes. Yes, for the presentation, yes. Okay, so if the presentation has come to its end, I guess we can now move on to the discussion part. So the participants, we have some questions and some topics to discuss about. So... So um, let, let me give you some, some questions uh, that are about the presentation. Uh, 
and about focus and concentration. Oh yeah, there is one phenomenon that everybody is very, very familiar with. So you probably also experienced that so far. Uh, as you know, some people listen to music while doing some homework or while doing some work. And what do you think is the effect of that on focus? I'm just saying that let's let's imagine you are doing your homework for math, and while doing this your while doing this homework, you are just listening to a music. And what do you think is the effect of that on your focus? If you want to answer that question, feel free to raise your hand and yes. try your best. Yes, if you have the answers to the question, please raise your hand. Like for those who have recently joined, you can just, um, you know, ask the question again. Okay, so uh, I will repeat the question. So, as you know, some people listen to music while they are doing some work, let's say doing some homework. And while doing that, they just listen to music. And what do you think is the effect of that on their focus? Does their focus just decrease or get better or something? Or do you think it doesn't have a considerable effect on their on their uh, attention focus? Like someone wrote to the comment section, um, like she's saying like, I think mind works better when it's doing two actions simultaneously, like listening to music. Um, so they're just saying that when we do two things at the same time, when we do some multitasking, we do it better. Yeah. 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 Okay. Like, um, yes, I guess that's true for some people because I have, uh, seen some people so far that who, who just does, who do some things better when they are doing some favorite things simultaneously. For example, if you like listening to music, if you are really, really interested in it, and if you do that while doing some other work, this probably get your work better. But I don't think this is just the case for everyone. Sometimes uh, a lot of us really get distracted by listening to music while doing our work. For example, for me, while I'm do, doing some math problems, I cannot just li listen to music because it, it just distracts me. So I was interested in other people's experiences about this situation. So the question was, uh, what do you think is the effect of that in particularly in your focus? What do you think? Does listening to music worsen your focus or is it just the opposite of that? Is listening to music beneficial for your focus? Like, um, as you said, like, it really depends on person who is listening to music. <clears throat> for example, like, in my case, um, doing the, these two things simultaneously is a bit difficult thing. But, um, like, in my, let's say, um, friend's case, like, whose name is Cameron, you know, he's really good at doing th these two things simultaneously. And then he says, like, when I do some math problems, so if I just turn on the uh, melody, like the music that gives him the enjoyment, you know, he does those problems like in an um, like professional way. Uh, and I and I just said to myself, like, how come you are doing this? Uh, like, like I said, it's very, very difficult, like, to do th these two things um, at the same time. Yeah. Yes, yes. But do you also know that multitasking actually worsens our IQ? 
there is one fact that actually multitasking worsens IQ. If you are not familiar with this fact, you can just go to Google and then search for this task, for this, for this like fact, and then you will just find out. Doing multitasking actually worsens your IQ. That's a fact, unfortunately. Actually, I got a reading passage on my IELTS exam about multitasking, and it said that our prefrontal cortex, that's part of brain, gets worse when we do some multitasking. But yes, yes. It's kind of like a bit different for music, but like uh, it can be different. Like it's not like working, you know. Listening to music is not like doing a job. That's yeah, why I yeah, think. Probably. Yes. Like Rasulbek, you said like it will definitely worsen your prefrontal cortex, like the part yeah. in your head. Yeah, that's like your forehead. Yeah, like that responses your like deals with uh, problems and asserts some tasks to you. It's a part of the brain. Yeah, yeah, I got it. So, if you guys ready, I'm giving another question. Um. So, what do you guys think? Is there uh, any other tips to increase focus? while doing homework or completing any other task um just considering considering your own experience for example some people have their own techniques to improve their focus for example as we said some people listen to music to improve their focus to actually do a particular job better so is there uh, any other way to improve it, to improve focus, uh, that is unique to you? Like, so someone said, like, um, when I just start, when I just copying something, it helps to get more concentration and it will be much, much more interesting. But when I solve some other tasks, it all interrupts. Uh, she answered to the question that is given in a channel. In a channel, what about listening to music while learning? How does the that affect our performance? Yeah, like, uh, yeah. Good, point, good point. There's a thing called white noise. Do you guys know? White noise? Yeah. No, I guess we don't know that. It, it's like a sound on the background that plays when you do the things, like you do your homework or assignments or task, maybe. It's just a sound, a background sound. That's uh, not yeah. music, though. It can be just yeah. like, did you, ask, did you guys heard any um, musics, not musics, but sounds that are played while you do your some meditation? Oh, yeah, like only instrumental music, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Those yeah. are the like some forms of white noise that you can play. Uh, so so you're just saying that if uh like for some a lot of people this may be good, this may uh, like this white noise may be good. Yep. Right. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. It's background sound. It can even be like a background sound of a CD. It can be the noise of engines of cars that are going through the highway or you know it can be the sound of the birds singing singing yeah. for example simply just a piano or something you know yep right yes um so we can probably conclude that um it just depend on the type of the music so whether it's good or not for example it's some if the music is a type that is like very calming and you know like very slow and stuff it's it's might be very good for you but if it's a very loud music like rock or rap which includes a lot of you know um very inconsistent stuff and that is very distracting it can maybe bad for you yeah in terms of uh what keeping your focus Multitasking. Yeah. Yeah. What about coffee, though? Like, 
someone said like uh to the question have to stay focused like i have my own style i spin spin the pan to get more concentration like oh. uh, that uh, that's the best way to stay focused i guess <laughs> <laughs> nice technique though yeah yeah but so we were talking about uh coffee right rasulbek yeah i just i like so coffee can statement... also be a tool yeah yeah right. yeah i guess so yes but do you know that it's very bad for our health no i didn't know that like, um just so it it just contains uh a nice portion of uh caffeine you know yeah right so if you consume caffeine like regularly or a lot then it's going to be really bad for your uh for the co- quality of your sleep um if you do uh consume a lot of uh what caffeine then your sleep is going to be really bad um in the future i have read that some years ago i guess in a book and they were just say- saying that uh things that contain a uh, caffeine um uh, makes you just get get accustomed to the caffeine so when you cons- consume it a lot regularly it's going to really worsen the quality of your sleep uh and it's really going to increase the time uh for you to get a sleep you see so um i don't i don't think drinking a coffee would be a better way to improve your uh, like focus have you tried it's drinking probably- a coffee for yes. some period have you yes. tried like was it a good experience or bad experience um like of course for example i do drink coffee in the mornings uh but it's not that i have tried it before doing a whole work in order to improve my focus i just do that you know in the mornings and stuff i don't do that before doing a certain task i guess uh yeah i think that's why it depends on when you drink the coffee and when you wake up and when you sleep so oh, yeah if you sleep in the afternoon that the coffee that you drink in the morning can have some effect on your sleep that you take in the afternoon but you cannot oh. drink coffee in the afternoon because it will affect your sleep quality that you take during the night so it depends on when you take it also and yeah, there's also yes. one thing uh, there's a hormone called cortisol you know the opposite of testosterone on males and estrogen on females there's a co- hormone called cortisol it can also okay. be said a stress hormone and it gets high when you wake up and it, it also comes down by the afternoon and by the night but when you drink coffee in the evening like not evening in the morning when you drink coffee in the morning the the caffeine that you have taken through coffee blocks the uh the way that cortisol comes out of your hormones so um, it will just goes up anyway during the day uh, doesn't matter the time but you drink in the morning when you drink in the morning it blocks the way and it can go up in the morning so that it goes up in the afternoon so that you get that afternoon crash because you have drink that coffee in the morning and it blocks yes. your cortisol system but what so, do you think is the is the long term effect of drinking coffee what do you think is the long term effect of it for example let's say you just drink it let's say five times in a week and you just get this caffeine all the time and what do you think is the long term effect of that coffee actually helps you to increase your testosterone <laughs> yeah but thing. what about the yes of course <laughs> you're just saying you're just talking about its uh what benefits but um you're not really mentioning its drawbacks so i would probably say that 
what you are saying is propaganda. <laughs> <laughs> it can be right, yeah. but no, actually, actually, it will be called a program if I know the truth, but I don't know the truth. So that's why I'm yeah, yeah. spitting out facts there. <laughs> yes, yes. That's one thing. Like still everybody, every scientist like uh, gets over some disagreements about the benefits and drawbacks of coffee. So it just depends. It just depends on people and stuff. Like people around the world uh, still disagree with each other between the uh, drawbacks and, and benefits of coffee. So it's, of course, very okay that uh, there is no clear, a very obvious and concise answer to that question, I guess. Yeah. So let's move on to some other discussion topics. But before that, let me find one. Oh, yeah, there's one thing. What are some worst possible things that that can set up the day a failure, that can make your day a failure? So the question basically says that what are some possible worst things that you can do to mess up your day, to worsen the quality of your day, let's say? Well, do you have some answers yeah. or ideas on the topics? Yes. Feel free to speak up. So let me repeat the question. So what are some worst things that can worsen your day, that can yeah. make you mess up the day? For example, I have heard that uh, watching some Instagram reels right after you get up is the worst thing that you can do. Yeah, 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 right. Yes. That's like... I'm not, I'm thing. not really sure about uh, the explanation that behinds uh, that phenomenon, but like, this is a fact. I have just heard it some years ago, but I do not re really remember it's solid reason yeah watching shorts in and of itself is very detrimental for your yes, brain but what about what about doing it in the morning what do you think yeah that's right very... that's like very different that's would be like very much worse so yeah like waking up and staying in bed there are good reasons to stay in bed but once those are completed then staying in bed curtains drawn like Passively scrolling on social media, there are neurological data that's shown that when you are upright, you are stimulating this area, like the brain system called locus cericalis. So, when you're reclined, when you are like C-shaped, or looking down at your phone, or it can be a computer that you're scrolling at TikTok or maybe Instagram or shorts on YouTube. So. Uh, during that time, you become less alert and your posture becomes real bad. This is so common now, the C-shaped human thing. It almost feels strange to be upright. But when people are in bed, they're not getting enough light enough and they're trying to get the sunlight through the window. Terrible. They're dr drinking coffee too early in the morning today. But it's mostly about the sort of randomization of activities sort of making a cup of coffee while texting. They're scheduling like a little bit of work and then something hits the stress and they're dividing the attention. They're building this attention deficit. You know, it's a disorder. So I yeah. think it's much worse than anybody's thought. Oh, yeah, yeah. So if we said, like move forward, I guess our participants are going to be scientists in the future, right? with this information that you're giving. Yeah, when you are upright, when you're facing the screen of your computer or it can be phone, you are much alert compared to what you are doing by looking down. 
that's why there are some books that allow you to read them like standing up or there are some desks that um ra- you can that you can raise the uh, the height of the desk and you just stand up and do your job or work those are created to increase alertness and focus during the job and the work so yeah yeah so another question i've got here so the question is very basic how not to procrastinate oh i guess that's a question everyone, for many people yeah yeah i hope that everyone knows the uh meaning of the word procrastinate or so, yes, if you don't yeah. know the word or if you don't know the word you can just comment on the comment section so that we will give the definition of that word i guess everyone knows it yet so the question is how not to procrastinate how to avoid procrastinating can i answer to this question why not so um procrastination like it's 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 bad yes um but it's you that like the job seems difficult for you and you think you might think that it's really hard it takes a lot of effort a lot of time to complete the job but therefore you want to skip that you want to just procrastinate you want to just delay that but it affects more negatively like you are just procrastinating and it makes this job more harder to do and you'll just waste your time by doing some other job like trying to uh be kind of killing your time and avoiding that job the only solution i think is is to do it but but just not just do it but uh like imagine you have imagine like this is the job that you should do and you'll see the results you'll see the consequences you should imagine the consequences when you do it on time and we, and when you just procrastinate and skip it so first of it might like be pleasurable to procrastinate and but when you see the consequences they are really bad you'll end up getting unproductive you'll get you'll end up getting unfocused but when you complete that you'll feel accomplish it you you feel that you did some kind of contribution you helped yourself you helped to others you did that job and you'll see the effects of this of this good deed as well as you will be uh, accomplished and i think it depends on the person it depends on the person himself should train himself not to procrastinate he should and he should like uh, make his uh, circumstances uh, so kind of a focus set so uh, in disturbing that there is no other way than doing this job yeah did you understand like there is no other way than doing this you have to do it like if he for example if he is in the statement where there are a lot of comforts where there are there is an internet there is social media there is a phone there is telegram instagram youtube reels etc he'll just eh, i will do it later he'll just say eh, i will let's i will do it after 15 minutes and just i'm going to uh, sh- sh- uh, watch some instagram reels and yeah he just realized that he wastes his 3 hours but oh, yeah. when there is no phone when there is no distraction when there is no tv when there is no anything except useful things like book or something he'll like uh he'll get bored and for in order to avoid this uh, boredom he will do this he f- he will find interesting doing this procrastinative job 
Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, pretty cool words, yeah. Mm -hmm. I kind of proud. I approve this fully. Yes. So, any other uh, answers from other participants? Do you have some tips or tricks that you use to avoid procrastination? Speak up, guys. Don't be shy. <laughs> yeah. Nice words. Yeah. Okay, what do you think, Rasulbek, yourself, is the way that we can use to avoid procrastination? Well, well from science, based on science and scientific papers and articles, I would prefer to do something harder when I'm procrastinating. For example, I can be negotiating to complete my homework or complete those tasks and assignments. During that period, I just choose to do something much harder than completing my homework or finishing those tasks. It can be taking a cold shower, can be like training for like 10 minutes of push-ups or pull-ups. That's much harder than the thing that I'm doing right now. It actually helps you to go back to the thing that you were doing. That is homework for me. Um, it can be like going back to the thing that you're doing, which is easy. It can be ah. going to something that's hard. And then going back to the thing that, she, that was easy will be much easier for you to, you know, then complete it for the fullest. But if okay. you enjoy the thing, like the hard thing, it can be cold. Some people enjoy having a cold shower. So if you enjoy having a cold shower, then it's not going to be that much beneficial. But if it's a hard thing, that's a really hard thing that you don't want to do. And if you do it during the thing that you're during the time of procrastination, it will fade off your procrastination and you can easily go back to your tasks and assignments and easily complete them without yeah. any like attention so, drifting or another. Yes. Yes. So the purpose of that is simply is just that like um, doing something that is much more difficult in order to make the main work that you got easier. Right. Yep, right. It kind of oh, feels yeah. appealing to go back to the thing that was easy from the hard thing. Oh, you know? yeah, yeah. It just makes that thing seem easier. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Nice technique. Yes, yes. So, do we got any other questions? Do you guys have some que some questions to ask from us? Yeah. So, questions, questions, questions. I don't see any questions. So, Rasubek, do you got some questions yourself to give the audience? Or I not? don't have questions, but some guy said that if um, he or she has some procrastination, he or she will tell her mother or his mother about it in advance so that he or she will make me look, will make her or him to do it on time. Oh, so oh. I think it's a, also a good thing to rely on dad or mom so that they yeah. cheer you up to complete this thing. 
and also like a social impact you know when you say that some when you say i'll do something that means like basically for your brain brain like kind of urges you to complete the the thing that you have just said It's but like, you know what this this mother telling technique only i guess works for those who live with their families but what about those who just do not live with their parents or stuff uh for example is as, as we can see some students who study in the capital but actually from other regions they don't really live with with their families so what do you think is the technique for these people well they can just tell their friends it can be demotivating yeah. to tell the friends for example they may roast you that you are not completing the test you are intended to do but it can also be motivating at the end oh yeah so so if like your mother or father uh, is not around you you just can't tell that to your friends or any other person who lives with you actually that's a basic thing yeah mm -hmm. so 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 I don't think we have left some questions, I guess. So that probably means we can end the speaking club, right? Yeah, right. If you guys don't have some questions or any topics to discuss about, we can end. Yes, so <clears throat> um thank you for everyone just joining this session of our speaking club i guess you have gained a lot of knowledge uh from our teacher russell beck uh he actually did his best to make you guys a very good presentation about the theme i have seen him working on that shit really a lot and and uh I guess that's really it for my speech. Rasbek, if you have any ending words, you can just tell it. Okay, guys. Thanks for joining now. And see you on our next presentation or a speaking club. So goodbye for now. Have yeah, a nice sleep. You. Improve your focus. Yeah, and have a nice stay sleep. Focused. Have a nice Sunday. Have a nice Sunday. So tomorrow is a great day. Tomorrow is the... Have a nice day. day. Guys, goodbye. Thank you for organizing such an event for all of us. Oh, thank you too, but my bro, thank you too for joining us. Thanks. So, man. see you everyone. Goodbye.